Let's start with the idea of how does a person find a good trainer? Because this is, you know, it's hard enough to find a good doctor. And that's a highly, highly regulated industry, right? Like you either are an MD or you're not. Um, and, you, you know, but still, there are lots of different flavors of doctors. And there are some who really think a lot about prevention and really care about how you exercise and how you eat. And there are others who I think, you know, do, but frankly, don't have the time to really noodle that, right? So, so, um, as difficult as it might be to find a great doctor, it's probably even more difficult to figure out a trainer who's really good. So what are the questions that a person can be asking when they go into their gym or are looking online for a trainer to say like, is this the person who's going to help me learn to do a squat and a deadlift safely? Is this a person who can integrate whatever pre-existing injuries I have and really help me? Because I, I, again, I've, I've worked with people who, you know, I've watched people coach and I'm like, wow, that person really knows what they're doing. Yeah. They have picked up the absolute subtle art of how to cue somebody sure. to lift. They can focus on the non-obvious and get that person. And there's other people who literally have no clue. They look like they just watched the YouTube video and they're sort of parroting the YouTube video to you, but they have no real intuition about it. It's so very tough, very tough, because if you aren't an expert or a very knowledgeable person yourself, it's very difficult to figure out who is knowledgeable and an expert, who's doing a good job. Like if you're finding a good doctor, I don't know what that means. I have no idea how to measure a good doctor versus not a good doctor. Most doctors are equally confident in telling you what they think is going on and very differentially accurate. So it's a tough question. I would say that if you have an opportunity to chat with them and ask them a few questions, you could find out some things that'll I'll be helpful. These are all marginal pieces of advice. There's no absolute. I'd say the thing that comes close to the absolute of having a high guarantee that they're good at what they do is if they're um, certified in the Menno Henselman's PT course. Menno is an expert in our field. He knows his stuff and his trainers that he certifies have a high probability of being able to deliver to you what it is that you want out of them. There are other fine certifications out in the world, but um, a lot of certifications, you're just reasonably intelligent and you studied for an hour and voila, you're certified. So the certification doesn't go very far. It helps if your trainer has an undergraduate in kinesiology or some related field that is not by itself ensuring you that they're going to be good, but it sloughs off a lot of back end, if you know what I mean. Like you're going to get rid of a lot of not great trainers. You can almost entirely ignore what they look like because the preponderance of the reason people look like they do is genetics. The other is diet. And the other is just how long have they been doing stupid or smart things to their body, but grinding away. So if you look at a trainer that just looks kind of like a normal person, maybe a little muscular, a little bit leaner, you look at another trainer in the same gym that's just like got six pack on his face, you know, just ripped. Don't be like, well, well, that guy seems to know what he's doing. He's ripped. Like he can't give you his genetics and almost the biggest contribution to why he's ripped is genetics. And so people get hung up on this all the time. They work with preposterously underqualified trainers who just look the part. People cannot, uh, there's not like a transitive property by which you can just like <laughs> give someone your, your exactness. Yeah, I wish, right? You just touch their skin and you're like, I, I feel it. You wake up the next day super jacked. It, is, it was that easy. Um, you can ask them if, uh, how they integrate science into their practice. Not a guarantee because you can be evidence based and still have all sorts of poor practices. And uh, if they go mostly on personal experience and feel, you can be assured that they're probably not the greatest trainer for you. If they have a lot of personal experience that they use in their training, but also they're very adept at understanding the scientific literature and especially just the broad strokes basics, you're probably in better hands than not. Someone that can explain to you the reasons for why you're doing certain things and you just voice note record them and ask them, uh, is it okay if I record your reason? I just kind of want to think about it at home later, wink. 
And then you just copy that and feed it into Claude 35 or GPT 40 and be like, uh, give me a steel man and a red team for this. It'll do both based on the sort of texture of its responses. So there's all these LLMs are designed to be insanely agreeable and very kind. But when you're wrong, wrong, they'll be like, that's a good point. However, eight point list. You're like, that guy's an idiot. This is all wrong. <laughs> so luckily, you know, GPT-40, if it was embodied in a robot currently, would probably make a great trainer. And so how your trainer and various claims of their scores against uh, uh, GPT is probably one of the better ways to do it. And also say this, there's a big factor of how uh, you get along with the trainer, because you're going to want to find the training at least as n not unpleasant as possible and ideally as pleasant as possible. If the trainer is someone that you just kind of vibe with, they can dig into you and really get you going, but they're also super fun to talk to outside of when you're, you're, you're not dying and during training. If they can get you to become responsible for showing up on time in a sense of, uh, you know, the trainer and I are on the same team. He's on my team. And when he says, are you going to make it Monday? I just don't want to let him down because he's my buddy. And I, 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 I'm in this together. We're in this process together. I don't want to give up on myself. If you have a trainer where you connect with like that, you got yourself a great trainer. Even if they're not super evidence-based, they just get you in and get you moving. That's like half the battle right there. So let's say those things are things to consider. And the last thing I'll say is have a trainer for a few weeks, few months, and maybe learn up about what's going on. And then see like, oh, does my trainer know things or not? I mean, I had a person I was doing just nutrition for while my colleague Nick Shaw was um, doing training and not for her. And I was in um, my PhD program in Tennessee. I was training her or nutrition coaching via distance over the internet. And Nick was training other clients in New York and she was in New York at the time. And she told the trainer kind of the diet that I had written her. And he was like, oh, that's, that's stupid. That's wrong. And she was like, why? And the answer he gave her was so bereft of um, a systematic approach to knowledge that she texted me. She's like, do you have any trainers you can recommend to me? I think my guy's an idiot. And sure enough, gave uh, her over to a colleague of ours and Nick didn't have any room. And she's like, oh my God, this guy's beating my ass in the best way possible. I love him. Yeah, some of your trainers will suck and you might need a few weeks, a few months to realize like, man, everything I've heard about how this whole process works, my trainer doesn't even agree with me. Yeah, you might have to switch it up. Uh, you know, you might not have the perfect car. The first car you buy might just be a thing that has a steering wheel and, and wheels and goes places. And after you've kind of appreciated what it is you do don't like about your car, your next car can be a bit more of a educated purchase. <laughs> ¶¶